What does it mean to be labeled? Have you ever been labeled? Maybe someone called you a name long ago and you still can't quite shake that identity. Our story today features one such case. Let's get into it. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, where we share the gospel of Jesus Christ through the art form of audio drama. Yes, and that includes sound effects. We do this by using true life stories of real people. Just a note that our story today has some mature content, so parental guidance is suggested. I'm Timothy Gregory, and I've got a couple of questions for you. If you've ever been labeled, what was that label? And have you lived it out? Has it become who you are and who you think you'll ever be? We'll find out today about someone who rescues us from condemning labels and makes us new. Friends, while we may face the names and labels that are given to us, must we take them on? Or can we find hope in one who gives us a new name, in fact, a whole new identity? Let's get to it, folks. The true story of Laurie Sexton. Shh. It's okay, little one. Put her back down. Sue, I think she's hungry. I said put her back down. Well, she needs touching and affection. You're scaring her. Trust me, she'll survive. Not without care. You want to bet? I did everything I could to get rid of this abomination, and she's still here. I can't believe my own sister can be so heartless. What is wrong with... It's the government's fault. What? If abortion was legal, I wouldn't be in this mess with that little brat. Shining the light of the world into the darkness, this is Unshackled, true life stories dramatized and produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. The simplest of human necessities, like eating, sleeping, and hygiene, are complicated for homeless people. That's why Pacific Garden Mission keeps the doors open day and night, welcoming those who have no place to lay their heads or their burdens. Thanks to friends who care and send financial gifts, the mission provides a clean bunk for the night, nourishing meals, and fresh clothing to hundreds of men, women, and children each day. But there's a universal hidden need to be loved and have a life purpose. So mission pastors and counselors address that need too, pointing the way out of their plight. Now redemption is what this program celebrates. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is episode number 3695 in the series Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. Born in Hendersonville, North Carolina in 1964, before abortion was legal, was the only thing that saved me from being eliminated by the carving out by a physician, also known as curatage. I imagine most babies are born into oohs and ahs filling their parents' hearts with pride and doted upon as precious and beautiful, with love radiating around them. I was born into evil. My Uncle Jerry would later say that he was the only one who'd acknowledge me and pick me up and care for me. Old MacDonald had a farm. <laughs> That's close. <laughs> and on that farm he had a... Oh, I love that one. You always pick the best animals. Oh, wait. You're going to put this guitar through my ribs. <laughs> okay, now you can doggy pile on. I love you, Uncle Jim. I love you, too. You're a special girl. Uh-uh. Yes, you are. Don't listen to what your mom says. You're smart and beautiful and sweet. She not my mommy. What? Of course she is. No, she says she's Tim's mommy and Tam's mommy, but not mine. So not call mommy. Like it or not, she's your mother, just as she is theirs. Shh. She gets mad. You know what? Let's go for a walk. 
you can always go outside to get away. Uncle Jerry lived with us until he went to the Vietnam War. His leaving robbed me of the only goodness I knew. Her life started out bad and went to worse. And when her uncle was shipped off to Vietnam, she lost her last bit of hope. This is the story of how her hope was restored and how the darkness was replaced by the light. The true story of Laurie Sexton, right now on Unshackled. Hello? What? Can I come out now? No. I'm hungry. Too bad. My stomach hurts. Something else is going to hurt if you don't shut up. But I, I haven't eaten in three days. You keep running your mouth, you'll stay in there three more days. Now leave me alone. I'm watching prices right. I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> That's not my problem. And not another word from you, Lori. Mom, I wet my pants. Told you to shut up. Now you're gonna get the extension cord. No, no, please, no, don't, please. My beatings were consistent, usually with whatever was close electrical cords, belts, even a horse whip. If the blows caused me to lose my footing, mother would beat me on the floor hold me up by my hair and beat me in till she was too physically exhausted to make another strike. <laughs> Sometimes she even came back after getting a second wind to keep at it. My siblings never got it the way I did, but mother more than made up for it with me. How many is there? Four. Are they all black? Yeah, this one's got white. See, it's like it's got socks on. <laughs> never did care for black cats. Oh, they're so cute. Give them to me. Leave them in the box. No, let me have them. I don't want you hurting them. Hey, why are you... Shut up, Lori. Tim, no. Hey, what are you doing? Stop! No, you ran over them. <laughs> you were on top of them. Told you I never liked cats. We were raised to be prejudiced and to hate whatever we wanted to hate. Anyone who didn't do what mother thought they should do was banished. Unfortunately, my introduction to religion was toxic. We were taught everything that happened was done in the name of God. Everything. We were also told and encouraged to believe that we were good Christians. <laughs> She could at least wear a dress that fits. I mean, it is church after all. I told her that, Donna. I said, hang on a minute. Lori, who are you talking to? I, I, I gotta go. I'll call you back. Who was that? No one. Who was it? J just someone from school. No, no big deal. <laughs> you don't have any friends. So who do you think you're kidding? You little liar! No, it's not a big deal. I just... I wanted to see how Uncle Jerry is. I miss him. You betray me. But he's my uncle. I love him. He married that awful little tramp with her horrendous makeup that I hate. And you want to talk to him? I wasn't talking to her, just Jerry. Shut up! <laughs> you know who is not to be mentioned in this home. Do you understand me? Yes. I lost Uncle Jerry all over again as he became you-know-who. Not long after, Mother Sister Dee married a divorced man, immediately becoming you-know-who number two. And when Granddaddy split up his land between all his children and didn't give it all to Mother, he was also put on the outcast list. My mother took self-righteous judgment and condemnation to a whole new level. Can we go now? Quiet. Why are we just sitting here? We got all we needed from the store. Hush! Look over there. Where? There. Over there towards the park. What? I don't see you know who. No, it's not him. It's that measly Mrs. Williams. What's wrong with Mrs. Williams? 
Oh, she wears those pencil skirts with those high heels, and I will not watch someone walk into the house of God looking like she belongs on a corner. But she's nice. She always buys my 4-H greeting cards. <sighs> she's trash, and she's going to hell. You don't know she's going Yes, and that's exactly where you're bound for, too. You think I'm going to hell? I know it. <laughs> But I'm, I'm only ten. Oh, you're as wicked as they come. There's no redemption for someone like you. Someone like me? Yes. Everything about you. With that kind of consistent message, I started to really believe there was no hope for me. There probably never had been. Mother had ordained herself as God, condemning me to hell. And, and as a child, I knew no better. The only good thing she ever did right by me was taking me to church. Although motivated by her desire to appear as a strong pillar of the community, at least it got me there. Yeah, Look out! Oh, wait. I got this one. Can everyone see? Yeah, yeah I can see. Yeah, I can see. Uh, yeah. All right. So, this is Jesus, the savior of the world. He was beaten and then died on an old rugged cross in place of us for our sins, because he loves us so much. For anyone or just who he picks? For anyone who wants to have a personal relationship with him and to believe and trust in him. He says, well, why don't you read it, Jordan? Okay. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Good. Yes, Lori? But, uh, do you think he loves everyone? I do. Even the bad people? Well, Scripture tells us that God is love, and he loves you too, Lori, enough to die for you. He loves me enough to die for me? For, for me being bad? Yep. Well, what if I'm wicked? If you believe in Jesus, the Son of God, as your Savior, then there's nothing you can do to separate his love from you. But you don't know all the wrongs I've done. Jesus does, and he chose even the worst sinners of the day and called them friends. It was through Sunday school where I learned who Jesus really is and who he isn't, which led me to my next decision. We've all heard of hell, about what it is and what it's not. The Bible says many things about hell, a lake of fire, eternal darkness. But folks, the most daunting thing is that hell is where your soul will forever be separated from the love and fellowship with God. But because of his deep love for us, he's given us a way out of these eternal torments of hell. Folks, if you want to stay in the light of God's love and spend an eternity in heaven with him, then repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior. But do it tonight. Come forward, all who want this eternal gift of salvation. Looking around that night at all the nodding heads, I knew this made sense to me as well. I wanted Jesus to be my savior. And to be frank, having more fear of the one true God than I had for mother propelled me forward. I left my pew went to the altar, and was led down the Romans road that night as I asked Jesus to be my savior. But that didn't mean that life was now going to be peachy, especially at home. I can't find it anywhere. What are you looking for? My checkbook. Have you seen it? No, not since you wrote that check for school pictures. That was last week. Well, maybe it's out in the car. No, I didn't put it. Did you take it? <laughs> of course not. Things just don't disappear. Do you want me to help you look? You took it. I know it. No, I didn't. You did. I can tell when you lie, and you're lying. I don't even know what I'd buy with it. And that sure didn't stop you, did it? You just do things because you're evil and wicked. I didn't take it. And here I thought things would be different since you became a Christian. What? <laughs> you're not fooling anyone. You didn't really get saved, or you wouldn't keep lying. But I'm not lying. You can help me find something. My belt so I can beat you raw. What was one more beaten in a childhood of beatings? But this time, 
I had the peace of God knowing mother was wrong and I had really been saved and I wasn't wicked and going to hell. I now had a redeemer in Jesus Christ, but I'd had it with mother and her play in God. I knew just what to do. Folks, we'll get back to Laurie's story in just a moment. But first, I want to share a bit about how our ministry is able to bring hope to people all over the world. Unshackled is now in its 71st year of spreading the good news through powerful stories about real people. Our success is a result of God's blessing and the involvement of, well, supporters like you. When you contribute to Unshackled, it has a direct impact. Your support allows us to hire quality writers, talented actors, as you can hear, a skilled production team, and a devoted staff. Through your support, we're able to share Unshackled worldwide. So, in order to continue the work of spreading the gospel and allowing us to offer this program for free, won't you consider making a donation to Unshackled? It's really quite easy. All you need to do is click on the live link, if there's one where you're listening, or visit our podcast website at unshackledpodcast.org. That's unshackledpodcast.org. And then click the donate button. Or you can always write a check, unshackled. We take checks. You mail that check to 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. We thank you for your partnership in our ministry. And now, back to the true story of Laurie Sexton. After all the abuse and mistreatment, I knew just what to do. I just wasn't good at doing it, as a social worker found out. You know, you're lucky. You know, you don't know what you're talking about. I just mean a lot of kids have had it bad with all kinds of abuse. So I'm lucky? I see that you're fed and have a bed and go to a private Christian school, and that's a lot more than other kids have. Yeah. A lot more beatings than other kids have. I know it's not the best situation, and I'm going to be checking in. I can't believe you brought me back. She is going to kill me this time. Lori, you can't run away again. It's dangerous. Who knows who could have picked you up? And you could have been dead in a ditch right now as we speak. At least with the social worker and the state involved, Mother showed restraint with her so-called disciplining. So at least life was tolerable. That was until the case was dropped and Mother returned to her violent ways. You again? Yep. I didn't think you'd make it here so quick. Let me unload my briefcase. You have to forgive my attire. We were having our annual 4th of July barbecue celebration when I got the call to come in. Yeah, sorry. So I take it you wanted your independence too since you ran away again. Please don't take me back home. I won't. Really? Not only are you bruised and cut up from your beatings, but I talked to your mother. You did? How you think we knew you ran away again? What'd she have to say? Enough to make me realize if I leave you there, she will kill you. Oh, you believe me now? I do. I believe she could and would do it. <gasps> Took enough? I'm sorry. I didn't realize how bad things were. Can you get my sister out? <sighs> it doesn't work that way. Why? Was your mother beating Tammy like she was beating you? Well, no. But she needs out of there, too. Look, we just need to concentrate on getting you placed right now. Okay, baby? Unbeknownst to me at that time, my father was carrying on a sexually abusive relationship with Tammy. Unlike me, Tammy didn't have a heavenly father to hold on to her through her rough journey. I was reunited with Uncle Jerry, who took me in to live with his wife and daughter. But things had changed, and wasn't all I dreamed it would be. Go in the house. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get into trouble. Lori, this is the third time I've been called to school this week. And now they've suspended you? I don't know why I've been acting like I have. I didn't used to. This is a lot, you know? Us taking you in. I imagine it is. I have to keep taking off work to come deal with you or problems you've created and it's putting pressure on my marriage and I hardly have time to give to my own daughter. So would it be better if I go? Where are you gonna go? I don't know. 
I can ask the caseworker if there's something else. I don't want you to do that. Well, I don't want to make your life harder. And that's what I'm doing. So, back into the foster system. I'm sure there are loving, healthy foster parents. It's just that I never had one. I was molested at the first and last foster homes I lived. The first time I was so ignorant about such things, I didn't really know what was going on. By the time it happened in the last foster home, I'd learned to keep my mouth shut and deal with it. Get back! I mean it! I'll scream! If you make a sound, I'll, I'll call your caseworker, tell him about that boy at school, and I'll call his parents, too. I'll tell him all what you've been doing with him. But we're friends! I've done nothing with him! Who do you think they're gonna believe? You wouldn't! Watch me. I'll ruin his life in the blink of an eye and get you shipped out to who knows where. Now get back on that bed. Oh, I hate you! I had never thought of killing myself, but I had to put an end to this man's threats. So I took a whole bottle of his Valium, woke up in a mental hospital where I spent the next four weeks. The only way I got through that trying time was believing that God had me in his arms and I was his, and he wasn't letting go. I finally managed to get away from the foster system. Are you sure if it's okay if I stay with you? I, d I don't want to put you out. Well, of course. We're gonna have a blast. But is it weird not having an adult around? Well, we're 18. We're the adults now. We're tapping the Rockies tonight. <laughs> I don't want any more. Come on, live a little. No, let's go back in. No, I want to stay out here, just with you. I'm not your girlfriend. Hey, get off! Come on, just let me kiss on you, once. What's it say? I don't know. I think it takes a couple minutes. Okay, let's relax. Breathe. Laura, you're probably just late. Women are all the time for whatever reason. Yeah, mainly pregnancy. Shh, don't say that. Why? You think it's going to make it more likely? Okay, look now. No, it's still it. Oh, no. It's okay. It's okay. Um, this happens to people all the time. My mother was right. I'm good for nothing trash. Oh, don't say that. She knew. She knew all the time, and, and she tried to warn me. <laughs> tried to beat the wickedness out of me. <laughs> and here I am. She was right. She wasn't right. And she never even has to know. A baby's going to give it away, Lisa. I'll be just like those you-know-whos that can't be named. The ones she pretended didn't even exist because they're so offensive to God. Lori, quit it. There is something you can do to fix this, you know? I completely tuned out the Holy Spirit and dwelled in the flesh with only thoughts of myself. In that victim mentality... I made a choice that would forever impact my life. Here, try some of this. Thanks. What was it like? Well, if you can imagine a baby being vacuumed out of your womb, like that. Like it was garbage. I'm sorry you had to go through that. I wish I would have kept it. I even thought that lying there. Oh, honey. The worst part is that the one person who'd made herself God over me still has such a hold on me, while the one true God grieves over what I did. Hmm. Well, um, things are looking up. <laughs> things are looking up? Well, of course. We're young and have our whole lives ahead of us. But I have gone off on my own, outside of God's will. I feel like I can't even turn to him now. You went through a lot. Just give yourself time to rest and heal, and you'll feel like yourself again. That's not the point. 
Eventually, I met a man and we grew our family. But the frigid, punishing religion I had been raised in seeped through daily. I was hard on my kids, beyond strict, and I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought I was being a great parent, but I hindered them spiritually, not showing them the grace and mercy that God showed me. This is my deepest regret. Throughout my children's upbringing, I resisted the ways the Lord was trying to grow me into the wife and mother he wanted me to be. When my nest was empty, I really had time to examine myself. My examination led me to seek counsel from a friend in my Bible study. Stuck? Yeah, I just feel stuck. Like, like I can't let go. Of what? My shame. The damage I might have done to my own kids. Being so hard on them. Well, no parent is perfect. We will make mistakes, and fixating on them won't help. Yeah? But why am I such a hard nut to crack? I mean, I've watched you with your kids, and, and you just seem to radiate the Holy Spirit. Well, I try to walk in the Spirit as he did. But wh what does that mean? Well... Life is hard, obviously. Now, we can buckle to the hardships and become hopeless and pessimistic, discouraged, and even stuck. Or we can trust that the Lord is with us in the hard times. And, and if we can just ride out the storm, relying on Him, His Word, and being in a community of believers, well, we can grow, we can walk, and, and ultimately live in God's Spirit by putting our trust and faith in Him. Huh. Looking back over my life, I see so many times the unseen hand that guided and blessed me. But my faith still falters. Ah, so it's a faith issue. Remember what Paul said in Romans? Here, let's read it. Go ahead. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Trust in the Word, Lori. Our faith is built up when we spend time in the Bible because faith is believing the Word of God and acting upon it, not responding to our own perceptions. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Let me pray for you. Lord, we know that you love Lori and want her to live a life of faith in you. Help her to trust in what she learns of you in these scriptures, that she can believe in you as her Father in heaven, her Creator, her Redeemer, and Savior. Turning the shame of my past over to Jesus was difficult. I did not deserve absolution, but Jesus already paid my sin debt with his death on the cross. Becoming a student of the Bible helped me fully embrace his gift of salvation and my full pardon. I see now I had been denying it for so long, believing I wasn't worthy. I now take comfort and know I am a child of the King. As we heard from Laurie, Sometimes others will label us a name that sticks with us and makes us feel like that is all we'll ever be. But friend, labels are for jars, not people. Moreover, Jesus Christ has come to give us a new identity and a new life, one with Him. He takes our old selves and makes us new and clean. The Bible says in Ezekiel 36:26. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. Friend, will you let Jesus give you a new heart and a new name? Now, we love hearing from our listeners here on the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, so send us your questions and we'll answer them here. It can be something you're curious about or just something you want to share with us. All you have to do is write us at podcast at unshackled.org or call and leave us a message at 312-281-1264. We would love to hear from you. 
And before we get to our sweepstakes drawing info, I just want to remind you to subscribe or like our Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. You can even share it or tell a friend. We'd also love for you to review or rate our podcast. And don't forget to check out our other podcasts on this same platform, Unshackled Daily Devotionals and Unshackled in Person. We appreciate your input and involvement in our ministry. And again, please consider supporting us so we can freely offer quality Christian programming to the world. The winner of the sweepstakes for the beautiful scripture plaque will be announced on our social media and an upcoming podcast. And keep an eye out for the following sweepstakes drawing, which will begin in the next couple weeks. This will be your opportunity again to enter and potentially win one of these beautiful reminders of God's Word. And next time... And that's why I believe that the Bible alone must determine the practices and doctrines of the church. <laughs> why, Tyndale, are you proposing a flock of sheep that shepherds itself? I'm proposing that someday all believers should be able to read the Bible on their own and in their own language. The year was 1525. All religious writings and ceremonies were in Latin, a language not understood by most of the people. Gospel of Matthew, eh? In English? Oh, Tyndale, you heretic! William Tyndale topped King Henry VIII's most wanted list for translating the Bible into English. I want him found and arrested! Is he willing to risk his life for this cause? The Word of God is a light unto our path. It is for all people to understand and not for the church only. Don't miss this powerful true story, all on the next Unshackled. Heard in the true story of Laurie Sexton were Connie Foster, Trisha Grennan, Jim Poole, Shaz Campbell, David Brian Stewart, and Charlie Babo. Original music, Don Badorf. Audio engineer, Michael Kahn. Sound effects, Jim Poole. Sound assistant, Martin Robinson. Recording engineer, David Pierczynski. Script, Kylie Hammond. And that's it for this week's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. So until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory, your brother in Christ. <laughs>